Hello there. What is up guys? Welcome to a brand new Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi update video. It is so pleasing to my eyes that we've got a little bit of a tidbit update from Entertainment Weekly, including all new looks at Ewan McGregor himself, an Inquisitor, some extra information on the trio of, I guess you could say, dark side presence with Darth Vader, the Grand Inquisitor, and a somewhat interestingly new Inquisitor, Reva, or Reva, 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 Reva. So as you guys know on this channel, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I want to cover it more. Hopefully that will be happening. I'm obviously going to be covering this Obi-Wan series. I've really enjoyed the Mandalorian. Boba Fett, you know, I think it could have been better, but you know, I enjoyed it. But uh, Obi-Wan, with Hayden Christensen returning, Ewan McGregor, and uh, you know, it's hard to not overhype this series, especially as I have a little bit of a bias, even because, you know, I grew up with those prequel <laughs> movies. So really excited for this. You know, I do recommend subscribing to the channel for updates on this series. I'm die hard kind of going to cover it, if you know what I mean. So let me not ramble any more in this intro and let's read out what Entertainment Weekly have to say. So on their first image here, we get a nice look at the Entertainment Weekly cover of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ewan McGregor lights up the Star Wars galaxy for the rematch match of the century. Holy Sith Vader's back. So, the force is strong with Ewan. E.W. Ewan. I, I see what you did there, Entertainment Weekly. It's fitting that E.W.'s final print cover before going all digital would be of someone named Ewan. Sifting through, Entertainment Weekly has the full scoop on Disney Plus's Obi-Wan Kenobi, including the exclusive first episode images showing not only the return of McGregor as Kenobi, but also Joel Edgerton as Uncle Owen. We also have your first look at the franchise's fearsome new villain in the form of a relentless Inquisitor named Reva. Again, I, I is it Reva or Reva? You know, if you spell that as like Revan, you know, it's just minus the N, so Reva, Reva. Look, I don't know. It, it call me stupid. I don't know. But that image of you and McGregor is Obi Wan. You know, I don't really have any complaints. You know, that's a Darth Vader Mythos statue in the background there from Sideshow Collectibles, and I've always wanted the Mythos. Obi-Wan because I felt like that was a really incredible statue. It's It's been discontinued, but Google it. Maybe you're seeing it on screen. It's an awesome look. But I would say like the reason why I bring that up is because Obi-Wan for all intents and purposes here is what I would imagine him to look like. I have absolutely no issues. It's an awesome Entertainment Weekly cover there. But let's move on with the episode images because I have a few things to say about it. Image number one here says trouble around every corner. What kind of Obi-Wan Kenobi will we meet in Obi-Wan Kenobi? Says Star Ewan McGregor. We find find Obi-Wan at the beginning of our story rather broken and faithless and beaten, somewhat given up. You know, I don't really need to delve into a breakdown with that. Makes sense. You know, after the kind of trauma Obi-Wan has been through, seeing the Galactic Republic kind of fall in the way it did, his brothers and sisters getting slaughtered by somebody he deemed as a brother. It's just so self-explanatory. So not only am I looking forward to, and also understandably apprehensive just because you know how they might handle this you know all of the awe we might get out of it could also you know they let's hope they don't go too far left and right with certain things but also I'm so interested in the psychology of Obi-Wan and how that's going to get explored because it should get explored quite deeply if he's got to a point where he's been overlooking Luke Skywalker's youth so far but now for the first time since Order 66 he's going to be coming up against a real tangible threat again. You know, we literally have a photo of this Inquisitor here going up against Uncle Owen. And and I have a few thoughts about that, but before I get too far ahead of myself, over here we have Obi-Wan just peering behind a pillar. This could still be on Tatooine. It could be one of the off-planet locations we saw in the teaser. It's hard to make out. We just see that kind of loomy light in the background. That could be kind of any kind of structure on any planet. However, it could just be... For example, say Obi-Wan looking at Uncle Owen and little Luke in the distance as he's just lurking in the background. But, you know, just chuck your ideas down in the comments. There's not too much we can really uh, definitively say about that. But here's where things get even more interesting. So inquisiting minds want to know, as the Force-sensitive Inquisitor Reva, Moses Ingram will prove a formidable new foe as she seeks out the Jedi in hiding for the Empire. Director Deborah Chow and writer Joby Harold describe the character as ruthlessly ambitious. Makes sense, you know, I, I know there's, you know, a little bit of variation of depth between various Inquisitors, but one thing I think a lot of them share 
by the end of their, I guess you could say, cracking into becoming an Inquisitor, or maybe some more than others, is this ruthless ambition. You know, imagine working under Darth Vader himself. And imagine if you kind of wanted to go to be an Inquisitor rather than having that kind of bled out of you from once being a Jedi. That, you know, it, I am looking forward to seeing this specific Inquisitor. I don't really think she'll be fanboying, but it's more like wanting to prove herself. And what is a Sith Inquisitor willing to do to prove herself to someone like that of the Empire's Darth Vader? And let alone uh, the, the Grand Inquisitor. So here we have another image here. One that I find super duper fascinating. So it says, Caving in. McGregor's Obi-Wan Kenobi is a master Jedi. And a master of decluttering. As evidenced by his sparse dwelling on Tatooine. Where he has set up shop to watch over a young Luke Skywalker. Now, this isn't so much his setup shop kind of thing that we saw from Alec Guinness's Obi-Wan, even though I, I do believe we'll be seeing that, obviously. Here, it's kind of cool to think that maybe Obi-Wan here has found like a little cave structure on Tatooine, and it might be where he goes to have a bit of introspection, whether that be talking to Qui-Gon, or maybe communicating through the Force with anyone. Who who really knows there? But I do feel like this cave gives me so many ideas in those kinds of areas. I would love to hear your, you know, I encourage you guys to comment down in the comments below. Jesus jokes aside of Obi-Wan here being in the little cave. It does make me think that a lot of his time must be spent pondering introspectively in the Force, and I do feel like this image here could be very symbolic of that. It could be his, you know, uh, Superman joke here, if you will, but Fortress of Solitude for Obi-Wan Kenobi in his time of loneliness on Tatooine. He only has one goal and he's been st stripped from the life that he once knew. It's all very needless to say there. And I can't, I I even just seeing a freaking cave makes me excited here. Carrying on here, we have On the Hunt. So we get the picture of uh, the Inquisitor Reva or Reva. So they share a common dark side goal, Ingram says, about the villainous trio of Reva, Reva, I, I need to decide here, the Grand Inquisitor, and Darth Vader. Now that is a trio I guess you do not want to mess with. So they're on the same team. As for what stands out most to Ingram about her big bad, it's all heart. So again, I think that speaks larger to just her ambition and her heart for like this, this uh, kind of desire, this innate desire that drives her to be ambitious and I guess ascend in the ranks of her own hierarchy that she's been involved in with this Sith in Inquisition. It's something I'm definitely looking forward to seeing them get a little bit in depth on. I hope they do. And anyway, in instead of just presenting, oh, I'm an Inquisitor, I'm going to hunt you down. I would like to see a bit of internal workings of that like Darth Vader sat in that throne I've seen in maybe some of the concept images the Grand Inquisitor being in that meeting as well as this um, Inquisitor Reva or Reva <laughs> um, you, you get what I'm saying maybe having a fly in the walls perspective there of that conversation in a meeting or a council kind of room about hunting down, how's progress going? What are you doing on Tatooine? Is there something there? That's gonna be so fascinating to kind of get in the minds of the dark side users here. But the reason why I get into that a little bit more as well is one of the next images before, I'm gonna go back to this other one, but making him cry uncle. Joel Edgerton is back as Uncle Owen and we don't necessarily like his odds in a face off with Reva. Interesting. I mean, it's not like he's got to go anywhere, but I don't know how I feel about this. So it says, but as a wise smuggler once noted, never tell me the odds. Thank you, George, for casting Joel Edgerton as Uncle Owen, last director Deborah Chow. That's all I can say. I'm guessing that probably speaks larger to him. Just The Sith Inquisitor could just slaughter him, but I, I reckon he probably barks back just Uncle Owen style. I, I don't know. And, you know, the fact that Deborah Chow's laughing about that, I could be reading too into that. I suppose this Inquisitor isn't Darth Vader, so wouldn't feel the the, the kind of force kind of uh, stamp that would be left on Uncle Owen of Luke Skywalker's that maybe Darth Vader would sense if he was in front of him there and then. So to be fair and play devil's advocate, I, I guess that this Inquisitor, this new Inquisitor, wouldn't necessarily pick up on that to be like, okay, this is sus. I guess for me, it's, a, it's very close for comfort. That's Uncle Owen. Face to face with an Inquisitor who is working in that other trio with Darth Vader. That is sketchy as hell. But I guess she, I can imagine in this scene that you're seeing on screen, might be like, hmm, there's something about you. But she can't place a finger on it. She doesn't have any personal connection to Luke like Vader would pick up with that kind of force vibes, if you know what I mean. So I'd love to know what you think of that. It could be a nice tense scene. God, I don't know if how I'd feel if Luke was in town with Uncle Owen in this moment and he's just like 
in the store with Aunt Beru or something. And even the Inquisitor lays eyes on this little child. I, I don't know about that. I know she wouldn't necessarily put it together because nobody at this point knows that Vader's children survived. Or Vader doesn't even think that. He thinks that everything and everything died in childbirth, right? So I don't know. I, I love your input there. I guess for me, it just, again, I bring it brings up the word apprehensive. You know, I'm very optimistic about this series, but apprehensive is a way to put it as well. So we have the image of life in the slow lane. We all know how Obi-Wan feels about flying. <laughs> this Jedi prefers to travel uh, by more primitive means, like this EOP, where, wherever possible, whenever possible. And yeah, we get a nice image here of Obi-Wan. Maybe we're going to get another, I don't like flying kind of comment again, who knows. And lastly, I believe we have cloak and saber now this is definitely when obi-wan is on another planet i do want to say that sus as hell wearing a jedi like robe but anyone in the star wars universe i mean you know jokes aside wears robes like that in the street you know whatever right so mcgregor is all cloaked up again as obi-wan kenobi and he's got places to go like the new planet of dayu which sort of has a hong kong feel to it says writer joby harold it's got a graffiti-ridden nightlife and it's kind of edgy. It's just got a different lane and a different feeling. Now that ends the Entertainment Weekly tidbit coverage here with the nice looks at the first episode. So I guess we know in the first episode here, Obi-Wan is already going to this new planet of Dayu with this kind of Hong Kong graffiti-ridden nightlife. Now why is he going there? You know, some people are theorizing as Obi-Wan kind of darting over the place because it got too hot on Tatooine. He's trying to draw attention away. It definitely stands to reason that it seems that Darth Vader is going to somehow know of Obi-Wan's lurking existence before that of the canonical episode 4, which I do argue can be left to open to interpretation with the dialogue that Vader says. I know that is heavily debated, but you know, just wanted to put that out there. But why is he going to this planet? What is he? Is he investigating something or is he just taking away heat? Either way, guys, all of these images look spectacular to me. I know that is easy to say they are just images, but I am a very big fan of the prequels. Despite the issues they have, they hold a special place in my heart. One of the best things to come out of the prequels, I think we can all agree, was Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan Kenobi. There's a lot of emotion there, despite some of the issues you may have with the prequels. There's a there's that innate story there that is really echoing to today in a lot of fans that we're about to see continue. And I think that really does kind of somewhat encapsulate and personify the, the kind of hype and excitement for this series. And I just can't wait. And getting these images just really oh man I, I can't really even put it into words so let me know your thoughts on all of this down in the comments below is there anything that you have to theorize about or speculate on maybe expand on some of my thoughts maybe there's something i didn't even think about i read every single comment so i can't wait to see yours down in the comments below but other than that maybe consider subscribing if you're brand new here uh, i will be covering this as usual i've covered as i said the mando Boba, book of boba fed Everything good like that, and we'll keep that Star Wars coverage going as the live-action Disney Plus shows come out. Uh, like this video if you did enjoy it. I'd really appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And may the Force be with you always.